Today, I'd like to talk to you guys about networking in Docker. What it is when we say networking, how containers can communicate, how it works, and some other details as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey there, and welcome to this video. My name's Jameson, and I'm a cloud engineer at SmoothStack. What is the concept of networking in Docker? Well, networking in Docker refers to the ability to connect multiple Docker containers together. To understand this a little bit better, let's go ahead and create a metaphor. Okay, let's imagine that you have a group of people in a large building. You want them to be able to communicate with each other easily and securely. To accomplish this, you can create a private network within that building and give each person a unique ID that they can use to connect to that network. Now, everyone can communicate with each other by sending messages through that network, and you can control access to the network by setting permissions for each person's ID. This is similar to how Docker networking works. You can create a custom network and give each container a unique IP address within that network. This enables containers to communicate with each other over a secure and isolated network, while still allowing you to control access to the network by setting up appropriate security rules. Okay guys, so for today's example, I'm gonna show you guys something really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to deploy a Docker application, not just one, but let's say multiple Docker services at the same time. And you know what? I'm gonna make it even better. I'm gonna add a challenge for myself. I will not open up my terminal once. I'm gonna work through this entire example today using just my Virtual Studio code and a very useful Docker extension uh, available on Virtual Studio code called, well, just kind of called Docker. And you can find this by just going to your extensions. And if we go ahead and go up here, it should be the very first option if you search Docker. And it's going to be this Docker extension by Microsoft. And I'm going to show you a bunch of very useful features, tips and tricks, and just generally how you can play around with this and just make it your own. But let me go ahead and just start. Enough talking. So if I go over here, uh, you'll see here in my week three folder, I have a bunch of different files available to me. If you've been following along, um, you might notice these are some similar files that I've been using from week two. This is just going to be a, a, just as a refresher, this is an index.html file. This is just a very simple portfolio web page. If you wanted to, you know, just give some information about yourself. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. This is just uh, an, uh, an HTML page that we're going to be using to host later on. Uh, next up, we have something here called a Docker file. And what this Docker file is, is just a set of instructions. Uh, I would hope that most of you guys are pretty familiar with this uh, by now. But just as a refresher, this is just going to be a set of instructions that we're running. And in order, the instructions are going to be from the top. Uh, we're going to be pulling a Apache-based image, the uh, HTTPD image, the latest version, which is just a very simple image used for hosting very simple lightweight web pages. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and copy over this index.html file over from this web page directory to this directory on our new image. And then we're gonna expose a, uh, our new container image to uh, traffic on port 80. And then last up, this last file that was not introduced last week, uh, and which is going to be kind of our, one of our center pieces today, uh, the docker compose.yml file. Now what this is, is kind of just, last, uh, last week we were running docker run commands, which were very nice. And uh, if you know from docking, running docker run commands or running, you know, CLI commands in general, you're, you're able to pass in flags which are able to, uh, you know, kind of specify different things that you want to run within our Docker file, or sorry, within our Docker run command. Uh, but you'll also notice that once we start to add a little bit more description to our uh, Docker containers, that run command gets a little bit too long and wily and hard to manage. 
Uh, also, if we wanted to deploy multiple Docker resources at once, we would we would kind of want a better way of doing that rather than running a run command and then another run command and then another run command. So one feature that Docker actually offers us is an abstraction called the Docker Compose file, which is this, where we can uh, just specify the version that we're using and then we can specify this thing called services, which are just going to be the containers that we want. So for this example, I'm going to be running two containers. You'll see here within this containers section, I have something called a build define and it's marked with dot slash. So all this is defining is just saying that I would like to build a Docker image, uh, my own personal Docker image. And uh, it's going to be using this Docker file to build off of from this same folder that this Docker compose file is located. That's, so that's all this uh, is doing. Next up, the next line is going to go ahead and name my container, my web image test. This next line is going to go ahead and forward my ports from port 80 on my container to port 8080 on my computer. And then this next line will go ahead and create a volume which is sort of like a mounted file or directory uh, from my host computer onto my container. So that'll go ahead and kind of essentially link, have a link between my uh, host computer and my container, which would usually be separated by, you know, just the uh, principle of Docker. And then lastly, I have this other new section defined called networks. And you'll see down here, I have it also defined as well. So what this networks is gonna do is it's gonna create uh, a private network. So it's gonna segregate my containers even further. And so uh, any containers that are defined to belong to this network called MyDB network, uh, those containers are gonna be able to communicate with each other since they belong to the same network. Kind of like if you had an internal, uh, you know, local, local network at home or internal corporate network and how those devices are able to communicate with, with each other. Uh, but it, it now allows me to uh, keep that communication internalized. So any new container that I spin up will not be able to communicate with these other two containers unless they belong to the same network. And then next up, I have a DB service defined, and this DB service is gonna go ahead and pull a MongoDB uh, image from Docker Hub, and again, it belongs to the same MyDB network. Okay, so let's say I wanted to go ahead and deploy all of these. So how would I do that? And I did say earlier that I'm not going to open up my terminal. So that means I'm not going to be typing out any Docker commands. So how can I do this? If I actually right click on here, you'll see that I'm presented with a bunch of different options. And if I actually go down here to the Docker file, I have another option down here too. So the Docker extension actually allows you to run services as well as build services just from right clicking. So I can actually just go ahead and run this command. And if I do a compose up, it'll go ahead and just run the same command a Docker compose up would do. And you'll see the uh, same command up here. So if I go down here, we'll see that this actually did fail. And let's see why it failed. Error image configuration, da, da 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 So off the top of my head, I kind of know this is just kind of an error pulling the Docker image. This sort of happens sometimes with Docker. Whenever this happens, I can just go ahead and exit out of that and just run it again. Sometimes whenever you encounter that error, just run it again, we'll go ahead and solve it. And now we'll see that it's actually pulling properly this time. And now, while that's actually running, let me go ahead and go over to my Docker extension. So if I go over here, I'll, I, if I go over to the top, this container section will actually enable me to view all of my containers. And another thing I'd like to open up is gonna be this images section. So you'll see here, two images just populated just now. So what that what's going on there is that this build uh line in this docker compose just took effect and built this week three apache image for me 
based off of the Docker file that I specified earlier. And this other Mongo image that wasn't there earlier, that wasn't there earlier, is uh, how it's because of Docker Compose pulling the latest MongoDB image from Docker Hub. And you'll see here this kind of co coincided with um, these commands running. So once this was done, run, uh, completed its runtime, you'll see they populated up here. And again, up here, we'll now see that I have two containers in the container section. And we'll also see that I have this kind of folder thing called week three. This is going to be kind of corresponding to the fact that this is going to be uh well my folder was called week three so it's kind of using that same naming convention and the week three is just going to be um all of my docker containers for this docker compose and we can also go down here and see that uh, it kind of appended all the resources i created with week three except for this one resource the very first service that i created which i defined with its own custom container name so this is another thing to note um, if you do not specify a name for your resource, uh, uh, Docker Compose will go ahead and just append a name for you. For you. So if you want to keep like a certain naming convention, I would go ahead and just make sure you specify your name with a section like container name. But again, if I go ahead and reopen this up, we'll see that I have containers now. And let's see, I will, I'm a little nosy. What is this files thing? If I actually open that up and expand that, the Docker extension will actually allow me to poke around the file system of the running container. So I can actually pull files, copy files, you know, easily check through my files, download different versions of my files, and I can just do this all from my Virtual Studio Code um, instance, which makes it a very strong ID. If I wanted to, I have I can go ahead and check my other sections. You'll see here I have volumes, I have networks. Here is my uh, week three network. If I wanted to get some more information on that, you can just go ahead and inspect, and that'll go ahead and give me some of the metadata. And I'm pretty sure it's kind of the same thing with everything else. Uh, if you wanted to go down here, poke around with your images, you can do different things like you run run a Docker container with that image. You can inspect your image. You can push it. You can tag it. This extension offers you a lot of flexibility, a lot of things you can play around with, and just a lot of neat features that makes uh, working with Docker very easy. And as you can, as you noticed earlier, I didn't run, I didn't have to type a single thing. All I did was, all I've done today was click around and uh, just kind of play around with this Docker extension. So I'll go ahead and stop here for today, guys. But I'll also show you one other thing, which we're gonna is going to make your life a lot easier so once i'm done i can just go ahead and run a compose down which will go ahead and just clean up the resources for me and same thing if i was done i could just go over here and run the same compose down and that would do the same thing to recap in this video we discussed the concept of networking in docker we talked about how it works, and also created our own example. For more information on how networking works in Docker, you can always refer to the official documentation on Docker's website. And, as always, if you guys have any questions about networking, or any cool ideas on how to use networking in Docker, please just let me know down below in the comments section. And thanks again for watching! I'll see you guys next time.